I have a question for you. How tall is the average ping pong table? Well, actually, I already know it's two and a half feet tall, but why the heck does that matter? Well, because we're gonna be building a huge ping pong table, like the size of a house. And that's what our TED Talk is going to be about. This guy right here is my friend, Dylan. And this is the guy that showed up to eat cupcakes. Together we're on a mission to make bucket list dreams possible for people with cancer. We were recently invited to give a TED Talk. We were offered 18 minutes to share our experience around the theme of prove them wrong. And up until we read that message, we didn't think about how much that idea actually meant to us. When our friend was given one year to live, we started our video series because we wanted to experience life while we still had the chance. Our silly ideas like breaking a world record or going to space helped to save his life. We really did prove them wrong. We'll be telling this story in the best way we know how. Very big ideas that are way too optimistic and probably a little poorly planned. But one thing that's really important to keep in mind is the last couple of times I went on a stage to talk about what we're doing, I broke down crying. So I'm gonna try and not do that. What does prove them wrong mean to you? To me, prove them wrong means that basically you're going beyond everyone else's expectations, the doubts that you often hear when you're trying to pursue something, pursue a mission or a huge goal, and going beyond those, doing everything you can to make it succeed and ultimately showing people that despite all the naysayers and the doubts that you can achieve it. That was a surprisingly good response, but the question is how do we convey that during the TED Talk? I don't know, to be honest, and we just gotta do some brainstorming, figure some out. Here's what we came up with, and I don't want any of you to judge our artwork, okay? I, I know we're not good at drawing. But this all started because our friend was given one year to live. We came up with something called Lemons for Leukemia. The idea is, when life hands you lemons, how do you make the lemonade? And that was to raise awareness for our bucket list, but actually it led to him finding a bone marrow donor. So we had 10 days to make a documentary about that experience and tell the world that our friend's life was saved. We flooded our town with nearly a thousand signs to promote our documentary screening, and there we were actually able to let everyone know that we're continuing this momentum to help other people. Now we have 29, that's supposed to be 29, you get the idea, 29 days until our TED Talk. So the question is, what awesome thing are we going to do in those next 29 days? Before we explain our plan, I need you to share this video with just one person. You doing so can help make all of these bucket list dreams possible. And to be honest, our community, what we do, can't even exist without people like you doing their part. We're going to be building a huge ping pong table, like the size of a house. And that's what our TED Talk is going to be about. It's going to be about the process of fundraising for, building, and revealing this huge ping pong table to a young boy named Talon who has a bucket list dream of playing a massive game of ping pong. And we're going to do that just as two normal guys going out and buying the materials and just making this a reality. And this is something, these small little activities, that has saved our best friend's life and so many other things. And hopefully this time Dylan doesn't cry from the stage. This is probably one of the coolest things we've ever done, but what excites you most about giving a TED Talk? I think what excites me most about the TED Talk is that we get the opportunity to share about everything that we've been doing. I mean, we're just two normal guys. We're just trying to do something good for people. And to be able to share that with a large audience and on a stage like, you know, the TED stage and just show them what we've done, I hope that they realize that a lot of this is, you know, anybody can do this. I mean, there's nothing special about our situation or what we have access to. It's just that a lot of people convince themselves that they can't do things. And I hope that by showing them this, by showing them that, you know, the process of what we're going to go through, that they can know they can do it as well and go out and just live for another person, help other people and, you know, help their community and the people in it. Hello? Hey, I got a fun little update for you regarding the TED Talk. Oh, no. What? They have canceled the event because, and I'm, I'm reading the email I just got here, due to some uh, unforeseen circumstances. Hmm. So it is no so longer it's happening. canceled. It's, yep. No wow. TED Talk. No presentation. <sighs> I hate can't that say I'm... that I expect anything less. One thing that's really bothersome is that every time we hop on the phone, I feel like lately... It's always bad news. <laughs> you know, it's like at the beginning of this, it was like, oh, yeah, we got this cool opportunity. This is awesome. And then now it's like nine times out of 10, every time you call, it's like, oh, this fell through. This person stopped responding. This event isn't happening anymore. You know, and it's just like, oh, I yeah. think the part that bothers the me worst most part is, is the fact that like we get excited 
freaking TED talk and we're like, yeah, cool. Awesome. You know, and we get all excited and awesome. plan and like we put everything into this, our, yeah. like all of our emotions and, and then Kirsten too, like she was going to fly out. She, not only were we yeah. excited, but like the people around us, they've seen the sacrifices we've been making. And again, they're like, okay, cool. These guys have finally made it. Like the world is validating their effort. And then we let them but down then it doesn't. too. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's why I've actually stopped. I don't tell Kara anything that's good news until it actually like happens. I've consistently disappointed her so many times that I was tired of seeing the, like, the joy leave her eyes when I have to tell her that it's no longer happening. It's like every, <laughs> you know how like people are like, every time you get fall down, you get back up. It's like, yeah, but what if like you just, somebody pushes you down and won't let you back up? Yeah. Like just puts their foot on your back and it's just like, you're or they, staying there. Or they give you like a warm <laughs> hug on the ground and be like, listen, listen, I'm sorry. You worked so hard. Just stand back up. Okay. We're going to get through this together. We're going to go and get some ice cream. And then you're like, okay, I feel good. This is all making sense. And then you stand up and they punch you in the teeth and then kick your shins and you're bleeding on the floor. That's what this feels like. And then like. they hug you again. I don't really think that we have the vocabulary to describe how disappointed and let down and just upset we are that it was canceled. But at the same time, you know, we've been thinking about it. It's like, okay, we were going to give this whole long spiel about how to overcome these things and be strong and be motivational. And in a moment where we want to just cry and scream and throw up, are we going to listen to that own advice that we are going to give? Are we going to go and crawl in bed and cry for a week straight? Or are we going to figure out how to respond and make the best of the situation? The reality is I already have plane tickets to go to New Jersey. They're non-refundable and I will be going in three days. So I pretty much need to figure something out. There's got to be a way to salvage this. And I think I do have an idea. Hi, my name is Dylan. Hi. Hello? Hi. Yeah, my name is Dylan. Hi. My name is Dylan. I run a documentary series. I run a video series where I help cancer patients with their bucket list. We were actually supposed to be giving a TED Talk. To be giving a TED Talk in New Jersey. It got canceled. Um, I'll actually be flying out there in a couple of days. And I was hoping... To... I saw you were doing an event. I think it was at 2 p.m. I was thinking maybe I could stop by. But I already and... have plane tickets. So I was thinking maybe um, of doing something while we're there, trying to recover it. Long story short, I was hoping to be able to come to your event and maybe participate. Learn a little bit more about why you guys are doing it. Okay, 22 phone calls later, I think I figured it out. Actually, the event ends about an hour after our plane is supposed to land. So I guess the really important question is, how fast can my girlfriend run? And here we are. We spent a long time trying to figure out how we proved them wrong, but once everything fell through, something Clay had mentioned made a little bit more sense. It's not really about Clay and myself and what we're doing to prove people wrong. It's more about how everyone is coming together to live for another. Another day, another person, another attempt. Because when we did that in the past, we learned a lot about ourselves. It's nothing spectacular, but I made those 22 calls trying to find a volunteer opportunity here in New Jersey. We ended up running into a park with all of our luggage to learn a little bit about how people across the country, normal people just like us, are following that motto. How they are trying to live for another. We didn't get to spend a lot of time there, but we met some people that are spending their weekend to just clean up a park nearby. I think that's what all of this is about. Life is hard, and there's letdowns and disappointments and stress and anger. Maybe the story we have to tell isn't some fancy thing about life and death, but the small things that everyone in the world is doing to make it all just a little bit easier. 